think we'll all be agreed that the Germans make some pretty fine beer, even if, like me, you have to stick to the non-alcoholic stuff. They make some great motorhomes too, as we've seen in recent reviews of some rather expensive A-classes from Cartago and Frankia. But what if your budget isn't 170 or 200 grand? What if your driveway isn't big enough for a eight, nine metre motorhome? Well, let's have a look today at something a bit more modest. The new Burstner Nexovan Active T700 and go up to 6.99 metres as this one here. All the Nexo van range come with a three and a half tonne maximum gross vehicle weight so you can drive them on a standard car license. And then this particular model, well this is the T700, the island bed model in the range. Wind and wind and although you could sleep at this level, oh there's not a lot of headroom. This is only a seven metre van and yet you've got a proper island bed bedroom and it's a really really good size bed two down lighters as well as this single reading light which is on a rail so you can slide it where you want the only main socket in the kitchen which isn't really very ideal is it but the real trick with this washer I and mean, it's called a vario bathroom according to Bursner is that you just release a catch in the ceiling swing that wall around. If you step out of the shower and you haven't shut all the blinds, well, you might be showing the rest of the campsite more than you want to. Wrap yourself in a towel and disappear quickly back into the bedroom where the wardrobes are and you can have your privacy. Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at Camper UK's Leisure Park near Lincoln with this, the new Burstner Nexovan Active T700, a 2022 compact low profile. The Nexovan range includes five different layouts, transverse bed at the back, single beds at the back, an island bed or a French bed. In fact, there's two single bed versions. They start at 5.99 metres long and go up to 6.99 metres as this one here. Prices start at 62.595 and that's a 2022 season price, remember. So with us coming into the 2023 season very shortly, prices that I'm quoting will, of course, go up. Um, this particular model is the T700, so one of the larger ones um, with an island bed. And the price of this particular model starts at £66,095. Although there are a few options on this one, as we'll see as we go through it. Importantly, all the Nexo van range come with a three and a half tonne maximum gross vehicle weight, so you can drive them on a standard car license. But perhaps more important even than that is the overall width. You can see how little extra width has been gained by the habitation body in comparison with the standard Fiat cab. It's a very smooth join. Overall width actually is 2.2 metres, so that's 12 centimetres narrower than Burstner's other low profile motorhomes, the Delphin and the Lysio TD Harmony line. Cab, like the like most other Burstner models currently, is Fiat, although they do have uh, Mercedes in the range as well. You get the colour keyed bumper with the uh, Nexo van and of course the Burstner logo centre on the grille instead of Fiat. Now, what makes it an active? Well, in Germany it's an optional pack, in the UK it comes as standard and not only do you get the, the active branding inside on the upholstery and outside on the bodywork, but you get what Burstner calls a spoiler protection tube, this sort of chrome bar underneath the front bumper and 16 inch alloy wheels. Just gives it a bit of a sportier look, I suppose. And then this particular model, well, this is the T700, the island bed model in the range. So let's take a closer look at some of the external features before we go inside. First thing I should point out is the over cab sunroof, which comes as standard. 
What didn't come as standard for the 2022 season was the 140 bhp engine on this particular example. That's a, that was an £1,150 option, but for 2023, I guess it will have to be standard because Fiat seems to have phased out the entry level 120 horsepower engine. This example also has another feature you can't see, a 90 litre fuel tank, an upgraded fuel tank. Now that should give you about well, at least 500 mile range, um, something that uh, won't be happening for a long time with electric motorhomes, if we ever see electric motorhomes in any serious volume. Now, I talked about the smooth side and the fact that uh, this is a narrower motorhome. Well, one of the big advantages of that is that you can retain the standard original van type mirrors rather than the extended arm ones that stick out so much further that you normally find on coach built motorhomes. And when you're going down a British B road, not having your mirror stuck in all the hedges, that's a big plus. Another thing that you'll find is a big plus is these super flush windows. They really do neaten up the look of the side of the motorhome. More aerodynamic too, and you won't get the wind noise that uh, can result from windows sticking proud of the bodywork. Other obvious features, well you've got your mains hook up of course, and your cassette toilet servicing hatch, and down below your waste water tank. Now the waste tank is heated and insulated, and it's 90 litres capacity. Then you've got the filler for the fresh water tank, and that's 120 litres and inboard. And then you've got two identical locker doors. Well, this one gives you access to your gas compartment. So there's our one behind the other, so less convenient when it comes to change over time. Um, and then this door gives you access into your garage. But the, obviously this is the smaller door. You have got access over on the other side as well. And at the back, well, it's quite an attractive looking motorhome, isn't it? These distinctive tall slim Burstner tail lights, reversing cam camera comes as standard and it's quite a neat looking package at the back I think. Now your full sized garage door is on the off side and the garage is a good size but note the intrusion of course of the gas locker over towards the near side. Maximum width here is 1.13 meters and headroom under the bed 890 millimeters. You've just got this single light, a main socket here, heater outlet and forward of the garage you can actually see the fresh water tank with access for maintenance. But on this particular example we have the most expensive option here in the garage and that is a height adjustable bed. 1540 pound option to increase the size of the garage effectively to make it more bike friendly. So let's take a look at that. Now for that price you might have hoped that you'd just press a button and up the bed would go but I'm afraid not. You have to retrieve this handle the other handle there is the one for the awning and that is a £1,310 option for the Thule Omnistore wind out awning. But this second winding handle is for the bed. Firstly you have to release this catch and then attach the winding handle. It's magnetically attached and then it's just down to a bit of elbow grease. Wind and wind. Now when you finish that, simply fold up these flaps on either side. And now you've got 1.21 meters headroom in the garage. So good size for bikes, but say plenty of width. The only thing is, now with the bed raised, it is more of a mountaineering expedition to get in. And although you could sleep at this level, Oh, there's not a lot of headroom. I think I need to put the bed back down. So winding the bed down was a lot less effort than winding it up. And the last thing to show you on the outside, well, it's this habitation door, it's Hartle door, quite 
smart looking with this deep window. It's attached to the Fiat central locking and you have this electric slide out step. Well, you will need to use that every single time because it's quite a high entrance without it, but that's no bother. It's an electric step switch is just inside the door there. Now I'm going inside to show you the interior of this Nexo van and I'm going to slip off my shoes because we've got these rather pale carpets and they're a £460 option. Now I'm not going to follow the usual format with the inside but I'm going to show you the bedroom first because it's such an important part of a motorhome like this. This is only a seven metre van and yet you've got a proper island bed bedroom and it's a really really good size bed 2.01 meters long 1.51 meters wide that's nearly five foot wide and six foot seven long so if you're tall well put the nexo van on your shopping list but it's a it's a really good bedroom isn't it it's not perfect though like we spotted in the swift contiki when i reviewed that there are these gaps down the side of the bed and you can see into the garage. Well, if you've got anything smelly, anything with a petrol engine perhaps in the garage, that's not going to be great. I have to say, Rapido with their timbre system at the side of the garage, when they have the up and down bed, do that rather better. The other thing that surprised me is that in the lounge area, you have the nice concertina blinds, perhaps not so practical in the kitchen where you might get splashes, but then in the bedroom you get the cheaper flat blinds let light in at the bottom. Surely that's the wrong way round or you should just be consistent throughout the van. There's also a lack of lighting in here. Yes you've got these nice reading lights at the head of the bed but nothing else. Roof end, yeah that's good, you've got windows, opening windows on either side, small roof end and then the usual his and hers wardrobes with these good sized bedside tables. USB ports that side, main socket that side and I'm over on this side the wardrobe has a removable shelf so you don't have to use that one as hanging space if you don't want to. Over on this side it's just conventional hanging space. Headroom in the bed where you've got this padded headboard and yes, there is just enough room to sit up, so that's another plus. And if you don't need a bed as long as this, you can take out this little cushion here, just slide the mattress back, and you could leave that cushion at home. And you've then got a 1.9 meter long bed. I think that's about six foot two and a half. So it's still a decent size. Yes, it's a bit curved at the foot but it's still a, a decent size bed and now you've got even more room around the foot of the bed plenty of room now to get around the bed it's still just about adequate in the extended form but uh, even better like this if you don't need the full length other features well you've got this neat corner cupboard shelved top to bottom very very useful for folded clothes and when you just want to make this space private, you've got a hinged door on this side and a sliding door on the other side. Now I showed you the bedroom first because it's important to understand that in a van of this size, you can't then have a huge palatial lounge with long sofas to put your feet up. You could put your feet up on this half donette bench and there's plenty of room for two because this is just a two berth motorhome. Yes, there is an option to add a child's bed in the dinette, but that is just an option and one that's not uh, specified on this particular vehicle. You do, however, have four travel seats, adjustable, height adjustable automotive type head restraints and three point belts on this bench seat, which is actually pretty comfortable, better than a lot of its type. You've got a slight knee roll, decent shape to the backrest, and it does feel quite supportive and decent view out, particularly if you took these um, drapes away. As I said earlier, you've got the pleated blinds, the concertina blinds in the lounge, and for the kitchen, unlike 
um, in the bedroom. And it's quite a nice light area. You've got down lighters as well as this single reading light, which is on a rail so you can slide it where you want. And then daylight, where you've got a small roof light, a small roof fence over the kitchen and the dinette, and a big opening over cab sunroof as well. So it does feel quite light and spacious. In terms of decor, well, there's only one furniture option. It's called Brava, and it gives you these nice high-gloss cream cupboard doors with the chrome handles. It all feels very nicely finished. It certainly as as upmarket inside as more expensive Burstner motorhomes. And then when it comes to the upholstery, there's a choice of three. This one's called Pacific, um, but there are two other options. All three of them come with this faux leather aspect as well. The cab seats with their double armrests are where you're going to want to sit to watch the telly. Not because they're comfortable seats necessarily, but because the TV bracket is above the rear travel seats. Anyway, sitting here, it's good comfortable height because your floor is raised in the dining area, the same height as the cab, so nobody should have dangly feet. And when you do step down into the main living area, you've got 1.97 metres headroom, so good standing height. And you've also got a couple of coat hooks by the door, very useful. What you don't get is cab blinds, just these simple unlined curtains to shut off the cab at night or go right round the cab at night. Um, and that's one area where you can see that the Nexo van is Burstner's entry level. Before we move on to the kitchen, I should just say that there's really no storage around the cab roof because the shelf there has no sides to it, nothing to stop anything falling out the moment you get to a corner. Equally, there's no storage under the false floor in the dinette or under the bench because under the bench seat you'll find your RCD and the Truma boiler. It's the six kilowatt, the more powerful Truma combi, and it's the gas and electric version as well. That's another upgrade for the UK market. But if there's a lack of storage in some areas, well, there's certainly not in the kitchen. You've got these large top lockers with removable shelves, removable and adjustable shelves, and really big storage down below two really good sized cupboards and a large cutlery and utensil drawer as well that soft closes. The fridge is a good size too, it's one of these tall slim ones, automatic energy selection and 139 litres capacity so you won't complain about that. Good sized top cupboard above too, plenty of room for your cereal packets and anything tall in there. Now I've got my coffee machine on display in this vehicle for two reasons. One, if I didn't have coffee while I was making this video, the video would be half an hour of me asleep in the bed at the back. But more importantly, it also shows the position of the main socket, the only main socket in the kitchen, which isn't really very ideal, is it? It's all right if all you want to do is make coffee, but if you want to cook as well, why on earth didn't they use this blank at the end, which would be far more sensible. The other thing I can't show you is that there is actually this groove accepts a little slot in worktop extension flap. Not very big, but it does give you just that little bit more space. Otherwise, you've just got this area around the sink. I'll take the coffee machine away in a second and show you the cooker, because that is the Thetford triplex. It's the um, three gas rings and then combined oven and grill underneath. And that, well it's not a bad little kitchen is it? With the worktop flap, if you moved the uh, the main socket and got another main socket fitted, it's it's clearly been uprated because in, in the German market you just get a two ring hob. So to have that triplex cooker, it's a big plus. Of course opposite the kitchen, 
is the washroom and you've got this tall mirror on the outside of the washroom area so you can check that you're looking absolutely beautiful and of course that you've got your best shirt on now inside this space well it is a really good size space isn't it you've got masses of leg room and shoulder room when sitting on the throne good room to get your face over the basin too and this posh waterfall style tap plenty of cupboard space although these little upstands need to be a lot bigger to stop things falling out as soon as you arrive on campsite toilet roll does the little german trick of peering out of a little slot and of course the toilet roll itself is hidden in the cupboard behind but the real trick with this washroom and it's called a vario bathroom according to Bursner is that you just release a catch in the ceiling swing that wall around and then completing the space it's not a curtain thankfully but this pleated screen that just pulls across and then completes what is really quite a generous showering space and there are two drains in the shower tray as well so all your water should flow away nice and easily even if you're not parked completely level it is an excellent washroom of its type but it's worth remembering that the door opens this way so if you step out of the shower and you haven't shut all the blinds well you might be showing the rest of the campsite more than you want to wrap yourself in a towel and disappear quickly back into the bedroom where the wardrobes are and you can have your privacy. <laughs> Before we go for a drive, it's worth noting that this three and a half ton motorhome actually for once has a decent payload. In standard form, this Nexo van has a payload of 565 kilos. Now, obviously, with the few options, the awning and so on that this particular one's got, that will reduce slightly, but still, over half a tonne of payload is pretty good for a two-berth van. You'll also see that the chassis rails are extended under the rear garage, which is reassuring if you want to put something heavy in the back there. There's a GRP underfloor, too, to protect the underside of the motorhome, but what you don't get is a spare wheel, although, of course, with that garage space, you could always add one. So, on our little test drive, the first thing you notice is, well, I've driven about a million Ducatos and you always go down here for the handbrake, which feels a long way down, especially if you're not a very big person. So, where's the handbrake? It's gone. It's now on this one, on this person, a little switch on the dashboard, one of the new Series 8 Ducato options and the first time I've seen it on a motorhome. The beauty of it is, hand brakes on, parking brakes on, just want to drive off and we drive off. No reaching for the handbrake, don't even have to flick the switch, just off we go. And the other thing you notice is that this Nexo van comes with the top of the range full digital dashboard which I have to say, it looks quite smart. You also get the 7-inch Uconnect display, which does the radio and includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but not, not sat-nav, so you'll have to use your phone for navigation. You also get the reversing camera, which, of course, I showed you on the outside, but that uses a separate display rather than going through Fiat's Uconnect display. Otherwise, well, You've got all the usual things, cruise control, cab air conditioning, ESP and ASR, hill descent control, traction plus, everything you'd expect really. But this does feel like a smaller van, it actually feels compact on the road. Both in terms of performance, it feels quite lively for a 140bhp engine Fiat. But also just having that slimmer body does mean that it does feel closer to a van conversion, I suppose. And if you were considering a van conversion, this, OK, it's longer than most van conversions, anything but a, a long Merc or, or VW Crafter, but it doesn't feel that much bigger 
unless you're actually trying to park it in a parking bay or something. The, uh, the narrower body is a real boon on country roads, especially when you, when you get uh, more off the beaten track. And of course, the other thing you want to know is, does it rattle? Will it drive you mad with conversion noise? Well, no, it won't. Um, there's a bit of that German quality showing through. Yes, there's the odd, I wouldn't call it a rattle really, a bit of a, yeah, a little bit of conversion noise on rough, poorly surfaced B roads and the back, back of beyond of Lincolnshire. But no, conversion noise is really well suppressed for um, a, a coach-built motorhome. There's not not a lot of way, not a lot in the way of rattles or or anything really from, from the kitchen or from the furniture. So that's another plus. So my final verdict on the Bursna Nexo Van Active T700. Well, for a start, there aren't many vans like this. There are plenty of vans of this size with single beds at the back or shorter ones with a transverse double. Not many in this class with an island bed. In fact, amongst the few companies that do offer this sort of, this sort of arrangement are Rapido and Adria. So how does the Burstner compare? Well, it's perhaps a little unfair because I haven't got the, the other two alongside, but I do like this Burstner. This, some really good features, particularly the bedroom with that supersized bed. Washroom works well too, and the way they've upspecced it with things like the full cooker for the UK, that gives it a, a nice all-round appeal. I would like more drawers rather than cupboards in the kitchen so you're not bending down to get stuff so much. Yeah, I'd like cab blinds for example, but obviously Burstner have considered this to be their entry-level model even though, as tested now, this is £70,665, as supplied for test by Camper UK, the Bursner dealer in Lincoln. If you want a van with an island bed, but you don't want anything too big, I can see this appealing to people downsizing from larger, heavier motorhomes, but those that don't want to compromise on that comfortable bedroom or perhaps people with van conversions that want to trade up to something with a proper bedroom, which you won't get anything like that in a van conversion, but without going too big, because this doesn't feel a lot bigger than a van. And that is where much of its appeal really lies. Thank you for watching. Thank you for Camper UK for supplying the van and the campsite location. I hope you've enjoyed this latest, latest video. There'll be plenty more motorhome reviews coming along very, very soon. Keep watching. Thank you.